Now this laser does some amazing engraving. Check out this image that I engraved of my daughters. This is on a metal business card. Look at the detail you can even see on the sweater, all the detailed. And it's so accurate on framing that we engraved on a toothpick. There is my website engraved on a toothpick. So let's check out this machine and see all these crazy features. Hey you guys, today I want to introduce you to my newest family member. This is the Xtool F1, a laser so good that it earned a spot in my little shop. It is better than my S1 in many, many ways, yet it does not replace my S1. I will still be keeping my S1 and I will have both of them in the shop from now on. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now the way I will format this video is first we will make some projects. I want you to see what we're making. We'll talk about some other projects that I have done and I'm going to show it to you. Then I'm going to give you a tour of the machine and then in the end we'll talk about the conclusion about if you should or not get this laser, if this laser is for you. Now let's do our first project. For the first project, I'll be engraving some of these leather coasters. I feel like this is something that will sell really well. So if you are in the business of engraving things for selling, this is a good option. Let's engrave a coaster. Now, one of my favorite things about this machine is the framing. The framing, it is so, so nice. Uh, makes it really easy to center things. So I have a design. I should probably turn on my machine. Make sure it's connected to my computer, which it is not at the moment. You can see the X2 logo lights up when you plug it in. It beeps when it connects to your computer. And I do have a design over here. Now this button on the side, you turn it and you see those two dots. I'm hoping you can see on camera. There are two dots. I'm going to separate them. You see the laser is going upwards right now and the dots are separating. They're going apart from each other. I'm going to lower the laser until the two dots, the blue and the red dots go on top of each other. So that means then we'll be focused. This machine also has autofocus, but I feel like the manual, it's a little bit more precise. One cool thing about this laser is that it has two lasers inside. There's a diode laser and an infrared and you do not have to change the laser head. They're both already in there, ready to go at any time. In fact, you can actually um, engrave with the infrared laser on one layer and cut with the diode laser on the other layer, and you don't have to do anything. You just set it all up on the computer. They are all in there and ready to go. So I have my design. Let me frame it. I'll push the frame button, and you see this rectangle over here. Can you see there? Let me see if I can get you even closer. I hope you can see the blue um, rectangle that this shows me the framing. And I have the option of doing a outline a rectangle around it, or I can just outline the design itself. So if I just go to the outline, let me stop that framing and start it again. Now it will show me exactly where the design is. You can see it's tracing it. So it's not just a rectangle, it could be even more accurate. I'm going to put it back on the rectangle. And I'm going to increase the light power maybe so you can see it better. I'm going to click on framing again. And I'm going to increase the size of my design because it's a little bit small for that coaster. And it adjusts the framing as I adjust my design. Super, super accurate. I will show you some crazy accuracy on this machine. I was actually able to engrave on a toothpick. We will do that today just so you can see it. Not that you ever need to engrave on a toothpick, but I thought it was super, super cool that it could be so accurate. All right, there you go. My design, it's centered. I am going to choose my parameters. I can stop the framing right now. And for this design on leather, I'm going to give you my settings. I am going to use the blue light for this, so not the infrared. I will use the diode laser. I'll put the power at 50. 
then for the speed I will choose 350 it is wicked fast this laser as you will see passes one pass is good and for lines I will choose I don't need that many lines I'll go with 140 all right that is looking good I am going to close this lid and click on process and then start and I'm going to push the button on the side and this is all live I am not speeding this up this is happening right now and real time not speed up on after you know post processing I just want you to see how fast this machine is engraving it is almost done there you go we beeped and check it out right out of the machine I hope the camera is focusing let me move you a little bit up so I can see if you're seeing things so there you go this is our engraving it only took a few seconds framing was really easy I mean check out how nice that is super super cool and it took no time at all so you can batch process this really really quickly and if you have that extension uh, table that I showed you you can do four at a time because the extension table moves and you can engrave four at a time all right let's go to our next project now you saw how fast and nice it engraved on these leather coasters I also engraved on these leather patches that was sent to me with the machine from XTool. It came in the package and it has a 3M sticker on the back. But as you can see, it gives it a really, really nice silver engraving. And I thought that was super, super cool. Now I know a lot of people have a business for engraving coasters. So I decided to engrave a slate coaster to see what it looks like. And I mean, I am blown away. Check it out. Isn't that the best engraving you have seen on a coaster? I mean, I've engraved coasters before with my 40 watt, but I've never got this good of a result. Super, super nice. And it was so easy to frame because of the framing. Um, outline on this machine makes it really, really easy. For the next project, I'll be engraving these pens. This is another thing that is cool to engrave. Now, there's a few challenges of this. One, we have to make sure we center the design. Two, obviously the pen is round, so we are engraving on a curved, um, curved surface. So yes, you can engrave on a curved surface. That means if you're doing jewelries and you need to engrave on rings and so on, you can do that without the rotary. So I'm going to place my pen over there and adjust the focus just like that and let me get the design going those pens are bamboo pens um, I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested on in getting them they make great engravings and let's see my design right here I think I want the design a little bit bigger. I don't want it to be too small. And that is about right. I'm going to engrave it right there. Now my pen is sticking out of the table over here, so that's okay. I'll kind of close this, but I'll make sure I will use my goggles to protect my eyes. So for the settings for this one, I will be using power 80, still stay with the diode laser. For the speed, I will go to 355. And for the lines, I'll be using 200. All right. So I'm putting my goggles on. I am closing this partially. And I want you to see how fast it is. It is so, so fast, wicked fast. We're starting. Oh, I'm still framing. It won't let me start because it's still framing. Stop the framing, a process, and start. Push the button on the side.
There you go. All done. Super, super fast. And check it out. Let me move the camera so I can see here what you're seeing. Able to engrave on a curved sur surface. Really cool. Can you see it? Is it focusing? Super, super cool. There's my website right on this curved bamboo pen. So did you see how fast that was? Amazing. Let's do the next project. Next, let's do one of these uh, keychains. I feel like this is another one that will sell at craft shows. I'll put the link of this in the description below as well. I will take my design and make it smaller. I'll start the framing so I can see what am I doing. Obviously, design is too big right now. And we will be using the blue laser again, which is the diet laser. We'll use the IR2 in a second. So I'll stop the framing and we'll process, start, and let's do it. Real time, I am not fast forwarding this. This is all happening right now. I want you to see how fast it is. And there you go, it is done. Very, very cool. Now, yes, you can take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a wipe and wipe all that charring that is done there. But really, really good engraving. Super happy with the way it turned out. Here is one that I did clean with the isopropyl alcohol. And as you can see, a really clean, clean look. Now we saw we can engrave on wooden keychains and pens, even though they're round, we can engrave on those. I also tried engraving on this round um, that it came with the machine and this wood was too soft, too sappy. I don't think the result was that nice. But there is an image there and then I engraved the same image on just hard maple and got way better results. The same settings and everything as it was this round. But um, just the difference of wood makes a huge difference on the engraving. So choose your wood carefully based on your project or what you're doing. Speaking about engraving on wood, because this is a 10 watt and the spot is so small, you can get some incredible detail on engraving. I engraved this image, you guys have seen it before, with the Nightmare Before Christmas. Super detailed engraving. I mean, just look at that. You would never get that much detail. I mean, this thing is small, the engraving. Look at that. But it has so much detail. You can never get it with a 40 watt diode laser. Really, really cool for engraving. Now we know it engraves on wood, but can it cut? Well, I got these tiny earrings. Well, the earrings are not so tiny, but it has delicate, delicate cuts. And it's made from one eight inch plywood. And it cut it with no problem. Really, really nice. I wouldn't go anything thicker than one eight. I think this is about all you can cut with a 10 watt laser. Any 10 watt laser, not just this one. All right, let's do some acrylic, black acrylic. I'm going to peel the paper out of the back of this acrylic. And for this one, for the setting, let me stop the framing. For this one, we'll be using the infrared. So we'll go to the infrared laser in the settings. And I'm gonna choose power 100, speed 1000. So super fast for the infrared. One pass lines 240. Start, 
and let's see how it goes. Here is our infrared engraving on acrylic. It gives it this brilliant white engraving. Super, super cool. Infrared excels at engraving acrylic, plastic, and metal. That is really what it is for. It will not engrave on wood. Next, let's engrave on one of these business cards. Real time again, I'm not fast forwarding. This is super, super fast laser. My framing was not the best on this one. I didn't pay attention to the framing. But the engraving, fantastic. Now let's see how accurate is the focus. I am going to engrave on a toothpick. We'll see if we can engrave on this toothpick. So let's do it. Now, just on the chance that I won't be able to engrave on the toothpick and it goes next to it, I'm putting this MDF in there just to, you know, so it doesn't engrave on my plate. I want to make sure that my toothpick, I'm going to tape it with some blue tape on the ends just because I don't want it to move around as I close the door. Something like that. Um, let's get a design. I'll just put my website again in there. All right, that should be good there. We'll see how accurate can we be with the framing. And for the settings, let me stop framing. For the settings, I will be going to, just gonna choose the basswood settings. That should work just fine. All right. Well, let's close the door. Oh, I didn't focus. We need to make sure that we're focusing. There you go. Let's see if we can engrave. It should be really, really fast in such a small design. And there you go. There is our engraving www.skylerewing.store Nothing engraved on the MDF, so everything ended up on to... Let me move this thing so I can see what you're seeing. It's hard to show you if I don't see it. So there is our engraving on a toothpick. Now I'm going to do one more engraving on one of these metal cards and this time I am going to engrave an image. So let's do that. So here I have an image of my daughters and what I will do is invert the image because we're doing on a black thing so we need to invert it. And then let's frame it, see what we get here. Alright, I'm gonna move it a little bit more centered. We'll do something like that. Now let's see what settings I use for this kind of stuff. So for this one, we'll use the infrared laser. For the dot duration, we'll do 350. For the power, we'll do 49. And we'll do 400 the DPI. All right, that should give us some a really nice result and we'll keep it on a Jarvis. We'll stop framing. We need to focus. I will close the door and engrave this image.
And there it is. Check this out. Amazing. Look at the amount of detail. You can see the knitted sweater of my daughter. I think this is so impressive. I mean, imagine giving this as gifts to the grandparents, as a wallet card. I mean, absolutely amazing. I do have a photography channel. I think my photographer friends would really appreciate being able to print images like this on metal. Super, super, super cool. And now that you see, you can engrave images like this. Super happy with it. Um, I'll show you. I also engraved on colored one of this. And, you know, you can get some really, really cool results. Also, uh, the reason why I got this laser and wanted to keep it for myself is because I am selling this um, wood finishes and I can now print or not print, engrave straight on my cans. So I don't have to buy labels and print them and mess with them. Now, of course, these designs are not uh, the best right now, but I am going to work on them. It's so cool that I can just engrave this straight on my metal tins. Also, talking about engraving on metals, having an infrared laser would allow you to engrave on any metal, jewelries, and so on. I have this uh, challenge coin that I engraved with the infrared laser of this machine. And this, I think, is copper. I'm not sure what this metal is. It's not copper. I don't know what it is. But I do know I tried, I think it's brass maybe. I tried engraving it with my diode laser 40 watts and it was not putting a mark on it. So infrared, really, really good results with it. I'll put the um, link to this challenge coins in the description. I also engraved on this maker's coins. Um, this is stainless steel. I could have went a little bit higher power maybe to get it darker. It's hard to show because it reflects light, but it is pretty dark. And these coins, they're called maker's coins. You put your logo on it or your website and you embed it into the product you're making. It's a 25 millimeter, so you need a 25 millimeter Forstner bit for it. Now, in the package, it came with the machine. There was also some scratch paper, you know, just the one the kids scratched to draw on it. And I engraved on that. And it gives a really, really cool engraving on scratch paper. I don't know why you would need to do that, but you can if you want to. I was trying some different materials and I engraved just on this piece of cardboard. It did a fantastic job engraving. Then I also tried on this box. It was just a jewelry box from my kids' room and engraved. And then I tried it on a white box, just a cardboard box. I don't know what was in it. But this one, I had to do it twice in order to get the darkness that I wanted. So I had to engrave it two times on top of each other. But then I ended up with this really black, nice engraving. So if you're selling things into little cardboard boxes, no, you can engrave straight on it. Now, the first thing you will notice about this machine is the footprint. This thing, it's tiny. I mean, it can fit anywhere in your shop. If you work in a small shop like me and you do not have a lot of space for a laser, well, this could be the laser for you. It is very small, easy to store. Um, it is very light. You can carry it, you know, obviously anywhere. It is perfect for if you're going to craft shows and you do not want to log a giant laser with you and you need to personalize and engrave things. And um, looking at the machine, it has this door that lifts up. And this is where you would put your piece that you want to cut or engrave. So really, really cool. This uh, door is made from this green plexiglass. It protects your eyes, so you do not have to wear glasses as long as the door is completely closed. If you work with a bigger piece and you need to have the door open, then please do wear safety glasses because it will damage your eyes. So common sense, make sure you have it closed or wear goggles. So it has a handle, it has the emergency stop button if you so need to you know, stop it immediately. 
Then it does have a focus button over here. I will show you how this works once I plug it in. It has a framing button and then it has a few ports where you plug in your computer. If you have some of the accessories, it does have accessories. It does not come with it, but you can purchase it separately an extension table like this one over here. I'm not going to review this one today because I have not got it out of the box yet, but just know that there is accessories, an extension table that will make your workspace four times larger. And then also you can have the rotary tool if you're doing engravings on water bottles and so on. In the back of the machine, you do have an exhaust port. There is a fan there. It does have um, air assist. And it does come with one of these hoses so you can vent the air out. They also have an accessory for it that you can purchase separately. A uh, small um, air purifier, like smoke purifier that you can use with it. I do not have that. I am planning on just using this with my garage door open or outside. Now the machine also comes with this plate that you put on the bed of the machine for cutting and that would allow for air circulation so you will get less charring. So if you're cutting, definitely use this plate. For engraving, you do not need to. So this is the way machine works. On the inside, you have the plate where you put your piece. This plate does come out. So for reference, this is about the size you can engrave or cut with this machine. And obviously you can work on bigger pieces. This is why the plate comes out. Let's say I want to engrave something in the middle of my workbench, or if you have a large cutting board, I can just place the machine just like that on my workpiece and engrave straight onto my cutting board or bench or whatever I need. So just because it has a small workspace, that does not limit you to small items. You can work with bigger items. You just put the machine on it. The machine does work sideways, upside down. If you need to engrave something, I seen somebody like engrave the side of their car. They just held the machine sideways and engraved. It works upside down. It works in any position. So super, super cool. I'm gonna put this plate back. Also inside here, you'll get this positioning pins. To screw in, it makes your repeatable work super, super easy to align. You can screw them into these tiny holes on the plate. And then let's say I want to engrave onto my uh, business cards. I can always place the business card on that reference over there and make sure it gets centered every single time I design. So it makes it really easy for repeatable projects. I'm going to remove these pins for now. Now, one thing that you should also know is that machine, when it comes, it has this cap on the laser. So make sure you remove this cap. I did not know it had a cap, so I was firing the laser and I didn't know why it was not working, why it was not engraving. So I kept increasing the power and then I got an alarm saying that my machine detected fire and it stopped it. So the alarms start, the safety alarms do work. And um, then I realized I was almost putting a hole through the cap because the cap was on, it was just firing the laser into the cap. So make sure you remove the cap before you use the laser. So as you can see, this machine is really versatile. It can engrave on all woods, all metals. It is really portable. You can bring it with you anywhere. If you do not have room on the shop for it, you can just put it on a shelf somewhere and then just pull it out. You can do it outside. You can move it anywhere you need to in order to use it. And I really love this about this. It is really, really fast because the machine does not have a gantry that moves, you know, like the normal diode laser has the laser that moves left and right. Well, this one it's using mirrors, so nothing moves inside. It makes it super, super fast and it saves you lots of time. And we all know that time is money. So it's really good, really, really fast. So really portable, really versatile, really easy to use. Uh, super accurate on framing. I mean, you guys saw we engraved on a toothpick. I mean, how crazy is that? So very, very precise, which is important if you're engraving jewelries and tiny, tiny pieces. You want to make sure that you're not ruining a ring because your engraving is crooked or not, you know, in the center. So that is really cool for that. It works with the whole ecosystem of x -Tools, so you can use the rotary tool and the extension table and their software, which is free. Those are all good things. What is the bad? Let's talk about the bad things. Well, the bad thing is 
it only engraves about a four by four inch. So the size is limited. With the extension table, you'll be able to engrave at four by 16 inch, but that is about it, nothing bigger than that. So the size is definitely a limit. Another limit, it's the 10 watt. That is not a lot of power. It is plenty power for any engraving, but for cutting, you are limited to one eight inch material. Another negative is the price. This thing is not cheap. Now, is it worth the money? I think it's worth it, but it's not cheap. So that I think it's also a negative. Who is this machine for? Well, I think it's for beginners, intermediate or advanced for anyone that does not have a lot of uh, room in their shop or someone that wants to start small. If you're doing good jewelry, like I said, the jewelry making, it's a big thing. It's perfect for that. Also for craft shows. If you're going to craft shows, this is the perfect machine to bring with you. Super light, super small. You can engrave dog tags, keychains, uh, you name it, all the small things, coasters, cutting boards that you make, boxes. If you make small jewelry boxes and you want to engrave them, personalize them, you can bring them with you. Obviously, that's not something you can personalize in your shop because you have to personalize it as you sell it to the seller with their name or whatever they want to put on it. So having it with you and being able to do it right there on the spot, super, super fast is a huge, huge bonus. And I think this machine is perfect for craft shows. I do not do craft shows. For me, I really wanted it for just to engrave my website on it or to engrave these pens. They will be you know, sent as gifts when I sell things. And I just love how fast it is. It's fast and I love the fact that it has two lasers in one. And when you look at the price of this machine, keep in mind that if you would purchase just the infrared module for the S1 or any other laser, that's around five, $600 just for the infrared. This machine has infrared and diode all in once, and you do not have to change laser modules. It's all already in there, ready to go. Machine comes fully assembled. You don't have to do anything. So it makes it really, really, really easy. Now, who is this machine not for? Well, I think if you're making bigger projects like signs and so on, this machine is not gonna do you any good. Um, also, if you need to cut materials that are thicker, this machine is not gonna help you on that regards either. So depends on the things you're doing and what you need it for. It could be the perfect, perfect machine for you or just not work at all. It could go either way. For me, I think it's fantastic. I'm really happy to have it. I will be keeping it. It will not replace my S1, like I said, but it will be a great addition to the shop. And uh, I'm sure you guys will see it in future videos.